Wes Moore does a hell of a job in the state of Arkansas, covers uh, Arkansas for Fox TV and also for the Buzz radio station in Little Rock. He joins us on 365 Sports, and he is the one that was the first that popped kind of the white smoke or close to something smoldering with John Calipari <laughs> and also Arkansas that lit up everybody. Wes, I know it's been a busy three days for you, and also uh, tomorrow Calipari apparently will be introduced what has your life been like the last couple of two or three days? Oh, wow. Uh, you know what? As long as we've been doing radio and you make contact and you have guests on your show and you get to know each other, once something like this happens, everybody wants to talk to you and you feel like, man, I got to talk to them because they've been coming on my show for years. We got a, you know, a business relationship. And so <laughs> I've done a lot of radio interviews. Let me just say that. And that's fine. I, you know, I like talking about the program and, and the Razorbacks and, and that's part of what we do. You know, we tell stories. So it, it's been crazy. I'll be, I'll tell you, man, when I, when I hit tweet and I <laughs> sat back and I saw that Twitter notifications just did, 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 and then myself, that's what was crazy. My cell phone, just whether it was just friends, uh, friends in the media, colleagues, just everybody blowing me up. And look, Dave, I, I was, hundred percent confident. I mean, I knew I had it. I had three good sources. I had one source that was just locked, locked down. Like I, I got it and I trust the heck out of this guy. We've known each other for a long time. He knows who I am and what I stand for. And, and I even say, you know, if I'm wrong on this, I'm going to take a beat. My, you know, my, my image, my yep. reputation, yep. everything I've done my whole career is, is going down the drain. He's like, well, I wouldn't do you that way. You know, I know who you are. This is good. You're good. We're reported. I was like, okay. And, and so David uh, tweeted, and then I have friends in the media. They're like, Wes, are you sure? Or Wes, I hope you have good sources. Or even one that said, Wes, I'm not hearing anything like that. Are you positive? And David, when you get that, you're like, oh no. You know, you start to kind of second guess yourself. And I sat back in my chair in my office. And I started going over the hours of work, the people that I talked to in the last conversation I had. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm good with this. I am, I am 100% sure I'm fine. And I started writing my story. You know, I was leaving the nine o'clock news. It's like eight 30. You know, I got a ton of work to do. I can't, I can't answer these texts. I can't get on Twitter. I got to get to work for TV. You mm -hmm. know how that is. Mm -hmm. You got a deadline. I, you know, the news is going to start at nine o'clock, whether I'm out there or not. And so I'm writing my script and editing the VO and doing everything you got to do to get ready for the newscast. And then I go out there and I, I do the, you know, I break it on the, on Fox 16 and I get done with that. And I come back to my office and to get ready for the, you know, the sports cast that's coming up later. And I, I see the notifications and I, and I, you know, I can't even look at them. I, I got too much to do. And I see my phone and I'm like, Oh my God, I can't, I can't answer these texts. I can't take these calls. So, Anyway, I stayed away from it until, you know, after my sportscast. And I was on the desk uh, wrapping up. I had done my sportscast. We are taking a break. And during the break, I looked at Twitter. And I saw a tweet out of Kentucky that said, sources tell us that John Calipari has notified the university per his contract that he is in discussions with Arkansas. And I was like, bam, that's it. I knew I was right. This is right. And then soon after, that's when you're – your national guys started picking up and tweeting it out and saying that Arkansas is zeroing in and talking with John Calipari. So that was kind of, um, that was gratifying. You know, that was like where you knew, yeah, I was right. I knew I was right. And I stuck by my guns and, and uh, everything's okay. Wes, Paul, I, I, um, I wonder from Arkansas's perspective, um, what do they feel? Are they getting Calipari at his best or are they getting Calipari? I mean, I know they think they are, but are they getting Calipari with something to prove? Yeah, that's, that's been the talk on, on my radio show for the last couple of days. It is, there's no denying that the last couple of years at Kentucky in the NCAA tournament haven't lived up to Kentucky standards. You can't lose to Oakland and St. Peter's in the first round. Mm -hmm. um, he's had very talented teams with good regular season uh, records, but in the postseason they've they've struggled. 
are you getting that Calipari? And there are, you know, of course, there are those fans. There's going to be the negative fans that say he's washed up, he's done, and the one and done system doesn't work anymore. His players only care about getting to the NBA. They don't, they don't care about winning and especially winning a title. And then you have other fans that say, look, this is going to be a, a, a rejuvenated John Calipari. That, you know, sometimes a fresh start's what everybody needs. I tend to think. And, and I've been told part of my, you know, while digging, one of the reasons he wanted to come to Arkansas was because he now can get his son on his staff, and that excites him a lot. Uh, he couldn't mm. hire him at Kentucky. Uh, his son was on uh, Stackhouse's staff at Vanderbilt. So he, he's excited. He's rejuvenated. He gets to work with his son. And this is a fresh start. But plus, now he's got a chip on his shoulder. And I've been told that by several people, that he, he wants to prove it to Kentucky that he wasn't washed up uh he wants to prove it look he's taken umass memphis and kentucky to the final four of course the umass and the memphis was wiped off the record books but you know how many coaches have taken four different teams to a final four that's something he can do at arkansas and and i think i think arkansas is in a good situation i think they're getting a motivated john calipari that wants to show the world that he's not washed up so what's what it was was this the reaction in Little Rock and Fayetteville and, and throughout Hog, I mean, we know how passionate. I always will remember the Nolan Richardson teams or the teams that Arkansas has had that dominated those tournaments in Dallas when it was the Big Eight, I mean, the, uh, the, the Southwest Conference and all of that history. What have former players, what are they saying? What's, what's this been like for Arkansas fans? Well, I had Joe Klein with me on the show yesterday. Uh, I asked him, scale of 1 to 10, where does this rank? He said, well, 10. Dusty Hanna came on today. He's, he's over in Tel Aviv playing <laughs> overseas. He, he said he was so excited he had to come on the show. He said, this brings Arkansas back. This, this, this is what Arkansas deserves. You know, people think of Arkansas and Nolan Richardson and winning a championship. And, guys, here's, here's where we're coming from. Arkansas won a championship in 94, played for it in 95, went to the Sweet 16 in 96. They went 25 years without getting into the Sweet 16. 25 years after that run, you go 25 years without getting to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament. That seems impossible. But that's exactly what happened until Eric Mosselman came, and they go Elite 8, Elite 8, Sweet 16. Man, that rejuvenated Arkansas. Arkansas basketball was back. And then Musselman leaves and goes to USC. They miss out on Chris Beard. And then all of a sudden, these names like Will Wade, Daryl Walker. Look, I like Coach Walker. He's here at Little Rock, and he's a friend. Uh, but when those kind of Chris Jans, that those names weren't exciting the fan base. And they're like, you know, somebody said it on the show, we're, we're about to have a, a Stan Heath hire, and, and Arkansas is going to be irrelevant again. Then all of a sudden, the news breaks that it's John Calipari. You you go from <laughs> Chris Jans or, you know, the, there was even talk about, you know, for a, a, a rumor of a, the name was floated out there, Kansas State Coach Tang. You go from that to, to John Calipari, that's why you have such an excited fan base. Not I mean, look, John Calipari excites you. Name a bigger name in basketball as a head coach right now. Uh, you can go with Hurley, and that's about it, right? And I don't know if Hurley's bigger. He may be bigger right now because he's gone back-to-back. John Calipari's got a huge name. But yesterday, the final the championship game is about to be played, and all they were talking about on ESPN leading up to the game was John Calipari. Mm-hmm. That's how big he is. Arkansas is not going to be irrelevant now. That, that fear is gone. They know he's going to recruit here. He's going to get great players. They're going to have success. The question is just how, how much success. How far can he take them in the NCAA tournament? I know this is uh, kind of a, a left turn, but if they're willing to spend this much on basketball <laughs> and be successful at that, if I'm Sam Pittman and I'm already nervous, should he be more nervous that they might make this kind of similar move in football after this year? I got that exact same call today. Mm-hmm. No doubt. I mean, less than an hour ago, a guy said, well, if we can do this for basketball, why can't we do it for football? And my response was, and my response to y'all is, you know, just because you got a ton of money doesn't mean you just want to give it away. You got to have a reason. <laughs> That's to give why it away, they have right? a lot of money. That's exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and and so John Tyson was motivated to give his money away to the university and to the NIL fund. 
because of his relationship with John Calipari. They're friends. They've been friends for a while. It, there, there are pictures on the internet when Calipari comes and plays Arkansas the night before. He always has dinner with John. And there's a group of them that meet and go out and they take pictures and people, you know, they've been seen. Their relationship goes back a, a ways back. And so that's the motivation here. Yeah. Yeah. Jerry Jones, you would think, Hey, Jerry, give Arkansas, you got 10 million laying around. Just give them for a new football coach and for the NIL fund. Why don't you do that? I, I don't know. You have to ask Jerry for that. You know, you can ask all you want to. That doesn't mean they're going to give it to them. They got to be motivated to give it to them. Westmore, Fox 16 in Little Rock, also the Buzz Radio, does a hell of a job and had this thing back in uh, uh, the early part, I guess it was, in the afternoon on Sunday and the story about what it's been like since that time. So um, tomorrow they, re they introduce him. What took so long? Was it waiting for him to inform Kentucky? What was the, the dynamics there? I honestly just think it was the, the contract, the lawyers looking at it. Um, I, I, the, there was no backing out. There was no second thoughts. This is, has been a, a done deal since Sunday night. Um, there's just a lot involved, I think, with the contract and then, you know, with the lawyers going back and forth. And I think Calipari has been working on, on his time too. I'm sure Arkansas would have loved to have him in. And look, let me throw this in too. You guys probably know this too. It's kind of an unwritten rule. You don't want to upstage the the championship game of the Final Four, and so I think that's one of the reasons they didn't announce anything yesterday. Uh, but then we've we, we've come to find out to, the Board of Trustees was hoping to meet today to finalize the contract. They have to approve mm -hmm. uh, any you know above line item issues, and of course this is going to be a, above a normal line item issue. So they have to approve this. That's a formality. Um, but they couldn't meet today. There was too many conflicts with different board members. And so they're going to meet tomorrow. And so that's part of it too. And here, the, the main thing, look, he's been working, I've been told he's been working behind the scenes. He's getting his staff ready. I'm sure he's even been recruiting and talking to uh, different players. And look, if you want to talk to your players, any current players at Kentucky were better to be than they're in Kentucky. So you can talk to them face to face. Um, but you, you also have to, um, just it, it's a big move for him you know he's packing up leaving kentucky and coming to arkansas and he's been there for 15 years so there's a lot of things to settle there too uh, but i've been told he's been working and getting things done and uh, getting his staff ready so uh board's going to approve it tomorrow uh he'll fly in tomorrow they'll have a big new a big press conference tomorrow night at bud walton arena and uh it'll all be done and he can get to work thursday because thursday's the first day you can have uh, recruits on campus again, that, you know, because of that dead period due to the Final Four. If he wants to have some uh, portal guys in, he can fly them in on Thursday and visit Bud Walton Arena. Um, Eric Musselman leaves to go to USC. Kyle Perry comes in. Was there a feeling between Eric Musselman and the powers that be that this was maybe kind of like Kyle Perry in Kentucky, just a, a shorter term deal that it's better for both sides if they move on? I mean, because it did kind of take me by surprise that a guy who's had outside of, of, of this year where they, they weren't as good, but the last few years, a ton of success. You know, after the first Elite Eight run Arkansas had under Musselman, uh, there was, I can't, I, I don't remember now what job came open and the rumors started floating and Razorback fans got, you know, paranoid, and worried. And, uh, that's when he got his first extension. And I was told by someone who knew Musselman well, he's like, he's not going there. Um, don't worry about that. The jobs you have to worry about are USC, UCLA and San Diego state. Those are his dream jobs. You know, he's from, you know, went to school mm -hmm. at San Diego state university his mom's back in California, family back there. He loves the West Coast. Those are his dream jobs. That's the ones you have to worry about. And so, you know, SMU came open. I wasn't, you know, he, he's not going to SMU. Um, I, I, I didn't worry about anything until SMU hired Andy Enfield. And then I was like, oh, no, mm -hmm. that's not good. And sure enough, this is all about him going home, guys. It, it wasn't, um, you know, and there was no ill will at Arkansas. They, they they were trying to keep him. I was told they offered a very nice retirement package. All he would have to do is stay here another five years. He turned that down. He, this was about going home. And I get it. I respect it. You know, 
that's that's where he that, like I said, that's his dream job. He wants to go back there. That's fine, you know. Arkansas is and some fans feel like they've uh, they've improved and they're going to be just fine now. Wes, last thing, and I know you got other things to do, including the rest of your job, but um, do you feel like that Calipari might go back to his old school ways and style that he played at UMass or at Memphis or early on at Kentucky and maybe the 40 minutes of hell that Arkansas was known for in the past? Do you feel like he might revert back to that there? I would think the fan base would love that. They want to win, but they would love that. Yeah, uh, when I think of Kentucky back when he first got there, I think of those long, angular, athletic, yeah, yes, and 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 you they were so hard to score on. And then if you you got a good shot, and you missed it. They always got the rebound. Of course, you got a shot off, they blocked it, and that was missing this year in the last couple of years. Their defense this year was terrible, guys. I mean, Arkansas that Kentucky Arkansas game where they scored Arkansas scored like 108, and Kentucky scored 114, something like that. There, there were times his guys looked so disinterested in defense, it was laughable. Like an Arkansas guy would drive, and they would – the Ole defense, they would just open up and let them go to the basket. It's like, I'm just going to the net so I can get the ball out and we can get down the court. It was it was bad. There was no effort to play defense. That's, that's got to stop him. But Coach Cal knows that. And he, I, I saw a good interview afterwards where he said he's having to do some reflecting, and he realizes he may have to change the way – he does things, and whether it's you know the one and done, you know, solely one and done, or maybe hitting the portal more, getting some older guys. But I think well, there's no doubting it. He's a great coach. He knows how. To, he didn't forget how to coach. He realizes what it takes to win championships. UConn won that championship. Look, their offense was great. They won that because of defense. Their defense was outstanding. They locked Purdue's guards down, and Edie got his, but nobody else scored. That, that defense wins, and he knows that. And I expect the defense to return like he had in Kentucky in his first 10 years there. Uh, Wes, great job. I'm glad that I saw some national writers. Not that you needed this or uh, that because you are, like you said, you stand by what you've done over your career, but saw a lot of that that uh, people were saying, hey, by the way, we need to go back to who's the one that started this mess. And I use mess in a fun-loving term. A fun-loving yeah. term. Uh, Wes Moore's the one that had this first, and he needs to get a little bit more credit. Good for you. Congratulations. Yeah, it makes a difference when you have the right sources you built up over your career. Thanks for getting on with us today, and good luck with the rest of your day, and enjoy tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Yeah. I appreciate it. It was fun talking with you. You too. Wes Moore, Fox 16 and Little Rock, also the Buzz radio station, does a